or not wearing masks um, help? And actually, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you about it is just because I'm inundated with sort of emails and messages from people who think we should be wearing masks. Uh, we just heard actually from the British Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, saying he says the science sh says they don't really yield a benefit. Why do you disagree with him? Um, because I'm a scientist who just led the world's first cross-disciplinary international review of the evidence for this with 19 of the world's top experts in this. And actually, the evidence does not at all show what he claimed. Um, it actually looks a lot like this could be one of our most important tools. And this is not at all against the advice of uh, the top WHO people. No. In fact, Professor David Heyman, CBE, who is the main advisor on this, said, I think wearing a mask is equally effective or more effective than distancing. So even the people that the WHO are meant to be getting their advice from are hmm. telling them this is perhaps the most critical tool in the toolbox. So just explain to me how wearing a mask works, because you don't say that it, in a sense, conveys protection to the individual, but you do say that it slows, which is vital, the transmission of this awful illness. How, how, what, how yes, does that, exactly. What, what, just explain in common sense terms how that happens. It couldn't be more common sense. It's so simple. Um, when you speak, this is kind of gross, but we all actually have tiny bit micro droplets of saliva come out of our mouth. They're so small, you can't see them. They're so small that within 0.1 seconds, they evaporate into much smaller, they call droplet nuclei. Now, those tiny nuclei are very, very hard to catch with a mask. So if you're trying to protect yourself with a mask, the, the ability to do that is rather limited. But at the point they come out of your mouth, they're still much bigger and any kind of cloth covering, such as a, a T-shirt material or a piece of paper towel, does an amazingly good job, like 99% effective at stopping those droplets. So if you wear a mask, then you stop other people from getting infected if you are. And here's the critical thing. We now know that the greatest, uh, the most infectious in the early days when you're first infected, mm -hmm. when most people have few or no symptoms. So if you're walking around, you could be an accomplice to this silent assassin that is COVID-19. You could be sick. You don't know it. You talk to somebody, you could have just killed them. So please wear a mask and protect the people around you. If we do that, it's actually possible we might be able to bring this important number R, the, the, the reproduction the rate, rate yeah. down beneath one. Absolutely. And just to be clear, I think you also say that you're not particularly wedded to surgical masks. Actually, improvised masks made out of cotton, you think, in some ways, do, rather better, do a rather better job. Is, is that right? Um, they certainly do a fantastically good job. It really doesn't matter too much. Uh, most people are focused on how do we wear a mask to protect healthcare workers in dangerous situations in hospitals where they're doing special procedures. And they do need special masks. They have to be treated in special ways. But you don't need those masks. They're not really going to help you much. Any kind of cloth covering worn in, you know, anything that covers the mouth is fine. All this business about it's got to be worn in exactly the right way, it's, it's nonsense. For example, should it cover your nose? Well, who cares? You speak through your mouth, not through your nose. Right. So to protect the people around you, just anything over your mouth is going to do a great job. In places that do that, they have hundreds of times or thousands of times fewer deaths than places like so, England. So, 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 show me the so, so, so tell us the countries which, in your view, demonstrate the effectiveness. So let's first of all look at what's happening in London. So in London at this time of year, there's normally about 1,000 deaths a week. And this year, at the moment, there's around 2,500 deaths per week. So regardless of how you look at it, it looks like there's an extra 1,500 deaths a week due to this disease. The entire country of Taiwan has five deaths. Now, here's an example of a great country that is distributing masks to everybody, doing everything right. Uh, the Czech Republic were a bit late to this, but they were one of the first Western countries to require everybody to wear a mask. And suddenly, they flattened off more than any other country in that region. Uh, New York now requires masks. LA now requires masks. Austria requires masks when you're, when you're shopping. The, the science has really made this abundantly clear that both to save lives and to get the economy back again, we need people wearing masks. You know, especially think of like bus drivers. They're, they're dying off because of this disease, these droplets getting pushed by the air conditioning back up to the front of the bus. We need to be protecting them by making sure everybody and, on the bus is And so, wearing cer a mask. so certain countries, as part of their exit strategies, are saying wear a mask if you go to a supermarket or a pharmacy or if you're on public transport. And broadly, you would say in those sorts of social settings, that would be sensible. Yes, you certainly need them when you're inside and when you don't have the ability to socially distance. These are the situations where we see people getting infected all the time. It's lovely to talk to you and um, we'll come back soon, we hope.
All the best. That